Hi guys, it's Scott. Hey guys, it's Liz. From King Queen Cichlids. And today we're going to start a brand new series called In the Kingdom. Now we're starting this series because a lot of people come to us at different fish events and different meetings and say, Hey, I saw your <laughs> video on Facebook. Tell me about some of the cichlids that you keep in your fish room and how big they get and what size tank they're in and all these various questions. So you and I thought it would be a great idea maybe once a month to do a little talk about some of the cichlids we keep, do a little spotlight on them, and uh, make people more aware of them. You know me, I'm always trying to convert people from African cichlids to Central and South American yes. cichlids, so <laughs> subscribe to this channel if you are wanting to get big fish, because I will certainly uh, whet your appetite when it comes to the big boys and girls. So. Uh, Ready? Yes, sir. Excited about our new series? Yes. All right. Today we are going to, in the kingdom, spotlight one of my personal favorite cichlids. Do you know what it would be? I do. What is it? The Paracromus. The Paracromus what? Manawens. Manawens. I used to call them Manawens. And then well, Jonathan. there's a G there. There is a G there. And Jonathan Strazanski <laughs> said, you're not supposed to use the G. You're not supposed to sound the G, so I'm trying to say mana winds now, okay, John? And uh, there is a photo of it done by one Mo Devlin. We actually have a couple of his pictures of the mana winds, jaguar, commonly known as the jaguar cichlid. And uh, so we're going to start talking about them. Number one, they hail from uh, Nicaragua. Honduras, the lakes of Nicaragua, Honduras, and all the way to Costa Rica. But we're hearing now that, uh, especially from Chuck Davis, our buddy Chuck, he, he's out there fishing and pulling them out of the Florida lakes in his area, right? Yeah, it's becoming more common to see uh, posts uh, people are putting up on Facebook uh, holding up uh, the jag cichlids or Mayans even. They're too big for people's aquariums and I think they're just kind of chucking them out <laughs> into the wild. I've heard two things. I heard they're getting too big for people's aquariums and they're chucking them out in the wild. I'm also hearing, especially with the bad severe weathers that Florida gets, hurricanes and stuff, mm -hmm. that these storms pass over these fish farms and sweep up some of these fish and throw them into mm -hmm. the local waters around there and then the fish grow up. So you know why they call jag cichlids? I believe they're called jags because of the patterning. Um, just like jaguar cats, they have these beautiful spots, uh, browns, golds, some silvers. Mm -hmm. They're just stunning. Yeah, and I love it when they get that whitish silver look, especially when, when they're breeding and they're just shimmering with that jaguar pattern. I absolutely love them. So uh, I think they're beautiful. They're really beautiful fish. I think because they're so readily available, they don't get near the... the good praise that they should, and I don't think they really do well at, at cichlid shows. I don't remember seeing a lot of jaguars winning. No, actually, I haven't seen a lot of jags winning, and they're, they are, they're beautiful fish, but um, not all of them, I don't, I don't think they have the same aggression level as some of the fish you see winning at the shows. True, but... The head-banging tendency. Jaguars don't back down to many, so... No, in the aquarium with other fish, they don't yeah, at all. They're, they're really a badass cichlid, I mean... Mo Devlin used to have one called Jumbo, and Mo used to do videos, and you could see Jumbo behind him while Mo was speaking, like trying to bite at Mo's head. So I, I've seen some aggressive ones. We definitely have a couple of aggressive ones that we can't even clean the tanks, right? Well, and but that's a different sort of aggression. That's um, an aggression from the breeding. That's true. They're protecting their fry, and they are very parental. They're very protective of their young. Mm -hmm. uh, they will sooner eat you before they'll let you near their babies, but yet they'll just scoop them up and move them so gently. These big, mean cichlids that will rip you apart. Yep. The same mouth will be able to pick up these fragile fry and move them without damaging them yep. at all. It's really incredible. I highly recommend people who are interested in getting big cichlids to start with a jaguar. Yeah, and like you said, they're they're very readily available in this area. You can go to Petco and get get a two inch fish for four dollars. Yep, yep. I would recommend that you get it from someone in the club. Agreed, but not everybody has clubs close to them. That's true. That's true. So we've told you where they originally come from. We told you that they're finding them in local areas in America now. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about their size now. 
they they normally get anywhere from 12 to 18 inches, mm -hmm. but there have been recorded uh, people that have recorded that they've gotten up to 24 to 24 to 26 inches. So uh, monster. Monster fish. Guy Jordan uh, had one that got up to 22 inches. We just talked about Moe's. I think Moe's was anywhere in the 19, 20 range. Mm -hmm. So they definitely get big. Right. It really depends on what you feed them. I saw some crazy guy feeding like frogs to a, a jaguar cichlid, and the jaguar was <laughs> eating them up like there was no tomorrow. So I think you basically whatever you feed them, you give them enough space, you give them absolutely clean. And I also hear water. frequent frequent water changes. Absolutely. Um, help build them big and don't, fast. Don't give away all our secrets now. That's one of the ways that we, uh, you know, keep good looking cichlids. We do water changes readily all the time. Uh, these cichlids are very messy and will create a lot of ammonia, so we try to, at least every other day, do some water changes to keep pure, clean water in those tanks. They will definitely, as you say, grow and get bigger and beautiful if you keep their tanks clean. So, with that said, what are, what are we feeding the jags that we have? We Let's just say we have one show jag that's about 14 inches long, plenty of attitude, loves to be with our, our pike cichlid. And then we have a breeding pair, not quite as pretty, but there's about three or 400 fry in there right now. And we're going to show you guys all this stuff. Um, and they breed every month? Yeah, about every month. But so. we feed them a variety of food. Um, we like the tetra pellets. Uh, we like north fin. We like your fish stuff. We do frozen foods. We do, um, we we'll do, do a little hikari, too. I like yeah. the gold. Uh, was it the color pellets? Uh, yeah, Hakari Gold, I think is what it's called. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so we, we will we'll mix it up mm -hmm. on them. Okay. So we've talked about where they're from. we talked about the sizes that they range. Now, in captivity, you're going to get anywhere from 12 to 18. Uh, we've talked about what we feed them. I strongly suggest that you don't feed them live food. Number one, there's too many parasites in these live foods that can end up killing your I mean, unless you're, you're breeding your own fish, which I know some people do, but there's... Yeah, well, here's my second reason why. I, I personally don't I do why. it. They get too aggressive. You mm -hmm. feed them live fish, they get very aggressive. They're chasing, chasing live fish all over the place, and it just causes them to be very aggressive. Now, some people out there might like that. Uh, I tend to not want to get them overly aggressive, so... We feed them a lot of variety. They seem to like it, and uh, the colors and their size really show. So uh, what else? We keep them, we want to tell you what size tank you want to start with. I wouldn't keep a Jaguar cichlid in anything less than a 55-gallon tank. No, not at all. Nothing less than that. And that's probably by themselves. And that's the one, yes. Yeah. Or maybe a pair. I mean, we've had a pair at a 55 before. Temporarily. Yeah. yeah. And then we, but as, it's not recommended long term. No, absolutely not. So, 55-gallon tank minimum, minimum. minimum. Uh, we actually have one in a 150 right now with a yeah. pike, and we have the breeding pair in, in a, a 110. 110 tall. Yeah, and they're by themselves. Yeah, all by themselves. And then we decorate it with a lot of driftwood. We try to keep uh, most of our tanks as close to the actual habitat as possible. We like to give them places to hide, uh, woods, leaves. Mm -hmm. Now, the 110 that we have the breeding pair in, you guys will get ready to see that, actually has a piece of driftwood that is kind of hollow, but it's small, it's big enough, it's small enough, excuse me, for the female to get in if she gets tired of her man. You know how you girls like to have a little alone time? Yes. And it's, so she can go into that hole and not be bothered. The male's too big to get in there. So that was really a nice piece of driftwood we got from Wayne Smith, yeah, I believe. sure did. Shout out to you, Wayne. Hope you still got some more wood because we're going to come get it. Um, anything else you want to talk about with the Jaguars? Not off the top of my head. Talk about their size, where they came from, feeding. Uh, feeding, what we have, and the tanks. Oh, let's talk about filtration. We talked right. about changing the water. Yes. Uh, the two tanks that we keep our Jaguar cichlids in actually have a canister filter and a hang on the back filter. Mm -hmm. On top of that, we said we're doing water changes like every two days as well. We do 20 to 30 percent every two days or so. Again, they're just so messy. The ammonia, you want to get the, the ammonia, the nitrates, the nitrites out of your tank as much as possible. You want to keep giving them fresh water. 
Uh, and I think that's another reason why ours breeds so much because we just basically put cold water in to give them that change of climate yeah. and it kind of triggers them to breed. So, again, beautiful cichlids. They're one of my favorites. I've always, when I've had a tank, I've always had a jaguar in one of my tanks. I could not be without a jaguar. Love them, hands down. Uh, so, you ready to go out here and take a look? Yeah. All right. Come on, my queen. Let's go to the fish. Room. Okay, Liz, tell us about this 110, 110 tank. All right, guys. So, we have our jaguar breeding pair in a 110 tall. Um, you can see there's fry everywhere. Uh, the parents have just sort of released them where they were in a tight little ball. Now they're kind of just everywhere. The male breeding colors, dark stripes, just gorgeous. Yeah, they look good. Fry are all over the place. Mama and Dad are not happy. We're, we're looking at them. Yeah, you'd like to jump out right about now, wouldn't you? So you can see the dark stripes, his breeding patterns. Really handsome fish. Hope you're getting all these fry that are in there. Alright, here's our show, Jaguars. Tell us about that one. So he's about uh, 14, 15 inches. He's in a 150 with his, uh, you can see his pike buddy there. Uh, again, the coloration is very different on him, not in breeding dress. Uh, beautiful coppers and uh, blacks. He's got a little, some silver tones in there too. He's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, he's, he's a gorgeous fish. We call him our show fish because his dorsal fin is just amazing. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of jacks that have that point to the top of their dorsal fins. Great deportment. Uh, just an all-around awesome cichlid. 